Well, you join me at uh, the quarry in Essex, one of the finest day ticket venues I've ever fished. And uh, it's a cool September morning, and um, I've just done one night, and I've got myself set up in a lovely little corner. There's a set of snags and uh, some deep water in this corner bay. Um, I'm in a, a corner which is kind of, it's not cut off from the lake, but it's called Deep Bay. Um, and it's, it's a little arm that comes off the main lake. And the quarry itself is about 25 or 30 acres. It's a fair bit of water, uh, probably a mile of bank all the way around. It takes a bit of time to go all the way around. Tree lined, mature, usually with gin clear water. We've got a bit of an algal bloom at the moment, but um, it's weedy. It's got islands, bars, plateau, big weed beds. It's um, silty gullies, everything you, everything you think a carp lake should have. Lily pad beds, willows, everything. It's the perfect carp lake. And um, it's got a stock of about 180 fish, something like that. There's a head of originals, which um, some of them are more, more than 40 years old. And the management have uh, slowly injected a new strain of fish, um, some really pretty younger fish to guarantee the future of the fishery. They've been going in on and off over the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, it's a place I started fishing a few months ago, very, very fond of. Did one night last night, as I said, found some fish showing in this bay, in Deep Bay, and uh, got fishing for them in a couple of spots, not far out, 35 yards or so, found a couple of clear gravel humps just by leading around, and um, put out a small amount of bait, because the, the, uh, the lake's not really fishing very well at the moment, so I only put out probably half a kilo of boilies on each spot, just a bit of krill, and got two bites during the night, which has been, you know, the lake's not been fishing well, so really pleased with that. The first one was a, sort of 17 or 18 pounder, call him, you know, we don't, we don't keep fish here, so I let him go. And then about half an hour, I had a half an hour ago, I had a lovely, absolute peach of a 25 pound mirror, well, he's a mid 20, I haven't actually weighed him yet, but lovely mid 20 mirror, um, which I'm really, really pleased with. I'm gonna get him out and show him to you in a minute, and then I'm gonna go off on my rounds because this sun's gonna break through at some point. I've got an area baited up which I think could do some day bites. At the moment, all the activity is nocturnal. But there's a couple of spots if you know where to look where you can get bites during the day. And I've primed up a little spot down in an island channel. So in a little while, I'm gonna wind in the rods and I'm gonna go off and uh, do a few hours down there for the day. But for now, I'm gonna get this uh, beautiful carp out, show you, and we'll have a look. go that's the sort of uh, carp that keeps me awake at night literally and uh, metaphorically it's the fish you dream about and it's the sort of fish the quarry so famous for now absolutely corking mirror well that's made my morning and um, hopefully the day's got more in store uh, I'm gonna slip him back and then show you the rig that's been doing the business for him Powerhouse. Well, this is the rig that I've been using for an awful lot of my fishing um, the last 18 months or so. And the main reason is because it's just a little bit different to the standard stiff hinge and shod rigs that everyone seems to be employing. It allows me to fish a pop-up really close to the bottom um, with a little food bait krill pop-up, so I'm not using any bright ones or anything like that. Um, I've been having a little play with white, but I've been getting more bites on brown. But um, this is the multi-rig, um, nice big size uh, four or five SR hook there, and um, some Christ and Sinks uh, 20 pound boom. And very, very simple rig, and because I like hand sharpening my hooks, it works really well for that, because if I blunt a hook when I've caught a fish, I can slide the hook off the loop and then put on a new hook, just as easy as that. Um, it's very, very weedy down at the quarry, so a leg clip and some rig tubing. Um, is very, very safe, simple and straightforward. It will dump the lead should I need to. Um, as you can see, I've nailed the tubing down with a lump of putty on the end. And after that, I have some thick fluorocarbon leader, only about four or five feet, again with lumps of putty on it. And this is very, very thick, heavy duty, 24 pound incognito. And uh, you know, that's doing the job that leg core would do for me, but obviously that's not allowed So um, down at the quarry. So a fluorocarbon leader, a lead clip, a lead clip of the variety that the swivel is locked in place. So 
I haven't got to worry about the swivel pulling out and the whole lot sliding up and jamming on a knot because that would be a disaster. So the swivel's locked in, so if that jams, the fish can pull and the lead will come off and it's just left with the line. So nice and safe and straightforward, that's what I've been using down at the quarry. Uh, it's caught me a lot of fish this year. sharpness is something I've had a fascination with just about as long as I've been carp fishing and uh, I was checking hooks by microscope back in the mid 90s um, I knew that a really sharp hook surely was going to get you more bites than a hook that was less sharp um, nowadays I sharpen my own hooks I've gone through different phases I used to get a guy um, who was an expert to do it for me but now I've, I've sort of fine-tuned it myself and uh, with a little input from friends, I've got it to a level that I'm very happy with. So hook sharpening is something that I'm a bit obsessed with, um, plays a big part in my, my terminal armory. And I use the Jag kit. In my opinion, there really isn't anything else that comes even close in terms of what you can achieve. The various other stones and little things um, just don't quite cut the mustard. You need a vice. If you're going to get one, try and get one that's got a slot in the thumb wheel. You must have the black handled file and you need an eyeglass. They're the three main things. Polishing stones are also useful. Okay, I'm going to take you through how I sharpen this up. You take the hook, drop it into the slot furthest from the thumb wheel, 45 degrees with the point and the eye upwards, like so. And then once you've got it in place, lock it up tight with a pair of scissors. Hence the uh, slot in the thumb wheel being so important. Okay. Take your black handled file. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay this down flat on your thigh and lock this in place. This is your workbench. This does not move. This hand does all the work. The, uh, the black handle goes in the palm of your hand and you brace the file with your forefinger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the file along the outside face of the hook point opposite the barb. I'm not actually touching the hook point. It's a curve point on this hook and I'm not hitting it at all. All I want to do is reduce the diameter of the hook point. Now, when a hook comes out of a packet, it has a very, if you look at the point against the sky, it has a very, very fast taper. It goes down to a point right at the very last minute. What I want is a very, very long, thin taper because to my mind that's going to penetrate flesh a lot more quickly than something that's short and stubby. So I'm going to start off just by a few more strokes on that just to reduce that diameter down. I want that to about two thirds of its original starting diameter. Long strokes, use the full length of the file. Pressing quite hard and I want to get it down to somewhere about there, so it's about half of its original diameter. Now, when you're doing this, do not start filing around here on the bend. You don't want to do that. The bend of the hook's very important. That's where the strength of the hook needs to be in place for the fight with the fish. All of this vertical section is going to be buried in the flesh and it's not going to bend. The very tip of the hook will be destroyed after you've caught a carp because we're making a precision instrument, but it will not bend out um, and lose you the fish because you've made it so thin. So once I've got it to that level, what I want to do now is, is blend this flattened area into the tip. So I'm going to lay that back down and I'm going to now take the file and roll with the natural curve of the hook, following the curve over. Now be careful not to file the hook flat, you're not going like that, you're just rolling with that natural curve. 
Okay, a few strokes, check it against the sky by eye. And then take your eyeglass, which is very, very important because you can really see up close what's going on and have a look at your point. Now I've got a bit of a hunchback where the barb is, so I'm just going to smooth that out. I'm actually very nearly done. Okay, wipe off the swarf and we're starting to get there. That's about 99% there. Now, a lot of people say, why do we need to sharpen hooks? We've been catching fish on hooks out of the packet since carp fishing began, and that's true, we have. Carp fishing revolves around fish taking our bait and bolting off. If they didn't do that, we probably wouldn't have a fishing industry. But I reckon about 75% of fish bolt off. We know for sure there's a big percentage that don't because we've seen them on underwater films. I see them up trees when I'm stalking. Fish pick up baits, they prick themselves and they freeze. And then they suck and blow and try and get rid of the hook. If you take a hook from a packet and nick it into your finger, you'll find that even with quite a lot of pressure, it doesn't go in very deep. And if you shake your hand, that hook will go flying out. If you take a hook that's sharpened in the manner that I just uh, executed on this hook here and slide it into the tip of your finger, just through the top of the skin there, you can see that it goes in several millimetres with very, very light pressure. If this hook wasn't in the vise and I tried to shake that out, I'd have a hell of a job doing it and it hasn't even gone down to the barb. I think really, really sharp hooks catch you extra bonus fish and to my mind, when you're trying to hook something that's made of soft flesh, there's no logical reason not to use the sharpest hook you possibly can. Well, there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about. A super short multi-rig and uh, a super sharp hook has nailed me another superb quarry fish. Now, this is a real ancient looking creature, really leathery, um, probably over 20 pound, lovely looking fish. And it just shows that fishing your rigs a little bit different from everyone else's without complicating things, keeping your pop-ups nice and low and keeping those hooks nice and sharp can pay dividends. With attention to detail, really sharp hooks, a bit of location or a lot of location obviously, but this fish really sort of proves the point in my mind about hook sharpening because uh, I was up the tree and uh, the rod just gave a couple of bleeps, thought a cooter picked me up, didn't melt off at all. And they're the extra fish you get, the ones that sit there shaking their head, sucking and blowing. We've all seen them on underwater films and when we've been stalking, I think they're the extra fish that you get by having a super sharp hook. And this fish realised 15, 20 seconds after hooking himself that he wasn't getting off it. And then he melted off just as I walked down to the rod. So bonus fish, I think. Keep your hooks sharp, low multi-rigs and uh, observation as always. A proper quarry silt pig. We let him go back where he came from. Definitely an old fish, bit of a wise one. Bit of a character too, I like him. One of the main questions I get asked is how to select the bigger fish within your particular venue that you're angling on. And there's no doubt in my mind, and it's very well known, that big fish like boilies. And if you want to just up your catch rate in terms of big fish, but catch less fish, and that's what big fish angling is a lot of the time, is selectively catching the bigger fish, then using a boilie only approach could well be to your advantage. It's no secret that 
the krill from sticky baits is a big fish bait. Its track record over the last couple of years has been phenomenal in terms of catching the big ones. Unlike a lot of other baits out there, this is a dark, rich fish meal, and it just it's just a lot different from the lighter coloured, sweet, small fish food that seems to be out there. Those other baits do catch big fish, don't get me wrong, when they catch everything, whereas this definitely seems to be selective in terms of big fish. But I like to give my krill boilies a little bit of an edge, so I tip them in a bucket and I like to glug them up in oil. Now, as you can see, you know, it's um, uh, fish in a boilie only approach is going to bring in less bream, less tench, less small carp, less of the pack fish. And a dark, rich fish meal boilie like this is definitely high on the uh, menu for a big, wary old mirror or common carp. Obviously boilies can be expensive. Um, before I got bait, I used to roll my own because I knew that having good quality bait was so important. So make as much as you can or buy as much as you can. I would always take a couple of kilos fishing with me. Um, but once I've got my boilies, I take them out of the freezer, tip them in a bucket like this, and then I like to oil them up. So these two oils have caught me a lot of fish on krill this year. During the warm months, I use the cap oil, and this is a blend of fish oils with capsicum added to it. Capsicum is a very spicy spice uh, with a reddish sort of colour, so um, that's a spicy fish oil. And when the water is a bit cooler, I add hemp oil, which is a bit thinner um, and will emulsify out of the bait a bit more easily, I think. But um, both of the, these oils are tremendous and um, they soak into the krill boilies very, very well indeed. Um, they both served me extremely well this year. So get on a big fish bait, fish boilies only, and that will help you select the bigger fish within your venue. That is my kind of car, rivered old little paintbrush tail. Ah, oh, just live for fish like this. Pure quarry gold. Uh, another one on the short little low multi-rig um, krill pop-up. I have a krill boil, it's big fish bait, sharp hook, and a reliable rig. Really, really pleased with this fella. What a special old fish from a very special lake. He's an absolute bruiser. Capped off a very, very memorable 24 hours down at the quarry. Krill's paid off for me, made up with this. Just a proper good session to remember. Love being down here. Let's slip you back, shall we?